2019 is officially here. And I'm asking the question, has society really changed? I know that everyone has their own views, opinions and beliefs on the subject. However, it could become a very controversial one, depending upon where we wish to take it. So stick around to find out where I'll be breaking all of those boundaries on this subject. Coming up. Greetings and welcome back to my channel. Tim here again with another How To With Basics, bringing you this time, not my usual, typical video. Now, if you've missed part one on has society really changed, the link to it is here above and will also be in the description below and in my op-ed folder within my channel. Now, I will not waste your time repeating uh, a prelude of part one, um, as we obviously have got a lot of ground, ground to be covered. Also, all the links have been provided, so let's jump straight into the video, shall we? Today, I'll be talking about my views on the educational system of today. Now, I can appreciate now, 2,000 years ago, most people were uneducated and knew no better. But today, in modern, in any modern civilized country, 99% of people have had some form of education, at least 10 to 12 years of it, and others more if, of course, they went on to college or university. This leads me on to the point of our educational system. Now... I'm not talking about universities. I'm specifically referring to primary and high schools, which simply is, in my opinion, another society-driven brainwashing institution teaching you not how to think, nor to prepare your life ahead, but merely how to be a good little sheep. When I was at school, and that was some 40, 50 years ago. And when I looked, still when I had my kids and I looked at what they went through, I see and noticed that little has changed. In that, when I was at school and the kids of today are not allowed to question nor debate any subject as to why, where, and how. And we are told on many occasions just to learn and accept it. That is, when it comes to exam time, repeat it word for word like a good, clever little parrot that has been taught how to talk and count. Nothing more, nothing less. What did I get from my school years? <laughs> Whoopee! I was taught two languages, English and Afrikaans, being the two official languages of my country at the time, which, of course, the one language was so bloody useless that it's not spoken in any other country in the world. Does that sound familiar? Oh, and mathematics. Now, that was useful, as maths is used every day by everyone. But sadly, schools don't teach you where and how to use it in everyday life, such as how to use it to, say, manage your monthly income and expenditure, budgeting, and, of course, doing tax returns which is all basic mathematics after all. The system doesn't want you to know that. You know why? Because if you did, you would then be money-wise and your chance of going into debt would then be greatly reduced. And the system wouldn't be able to screw you so easily nor take your assets away when you default because that is part of the plan of the elite is for them to get richer and for you, the man in the street, to get poorer. I'll be doing a video series uh, later on this year on how to with basics on money. Oh, then there was, of course, history and geography. To be honest, knowing the year that so-and-so was born and, born and died and the year that they led an army and killed thousands of innocent people is good to know. Of course, 
where the bloody Euphrates River is and the history of the pyramids and all that other bullshit of when they were in ha and built by who. Yet to this very day, they're still debating and disputing how it was built. But yet they taught you that in school. Now, all of that is, of course, really going to help you get a good paying job. Of course, that is what we are told. Once I finished school and went abroad, exploring on my own, taught me far more than the 12 years of my schooling ever did. So really, those are mostly bullshit subjects that simply added to our stress levels when it came to exam time, as good grades are of course needed, as we are told. Yet the grades are going to help you be better prepared and equipped to get a better paying job. What do I say to it? Once again, my favourite word, bullshit. In my life, I have opened, built up and sold a good few companies. Yet some of them I did close down because they weren't profitable enough. And yes, over my entire lifetime, I think I must have employed in a region of in excess of a thousand people. And trust me when I say, I never once looked or even asked for a single person's grade from school, nor was I interested in what subjects they did or didn't do at school. I wasn't interested even if they had passed or failed. Obviously being young people coming into the workplace, you wouldn't have any work experience not even for the most junior position advertised. Either way, with or without those grades, you are still going to be started on minimum wage. So in my case, if I liked the look of them, how presentable they were, how they spoke, conducted themselves, and how keen they were of wanting to learn the job and if they really wanted to work, well, if all of those boxes were ticked, they were employed. Now, getting back to the school subjects, we're not even going to touch on algebra. Another useless waste of time. And if less than 1% of kids ever use it, then I'll eat my bloody out. We are told that it is there to stimulate a certain part of your brain. Really? But they didn't tell you which part of the brain, did they? Well, if that's the case, I've got to be really stupid or brain dead, as I was useless in it. And still to this very day, I don't understand algebra. In my honest opinion, the entire educational system hasn't changed since I, nor my mother, who's almost 99 years old, first started school. They're still teaching the same things and subjects, yet technology has gone leaps and bounds over the last 100 years. The only change I see is that schools have whiteboards instead of chalkboards, and the kids use calculators and colored pencils today. But besides that, what else has changed? They're still using some same textbooks like the Merchant of Venice that was used in the 1930s and when I was at school in the 1960s or 70s. Yet technology has advanced leaps and bounds, but sadly the educational system hasn't. And why? It's brainwashing at its best and it has been tried and tested and it works well. So I change it. In reality, the system cannot teach society to think for themselves, nor to question, failing which, if they did, we risk anarchy. In saying all of that, I do also believe that for a young child, schooling does teach a child some good lessons, such as interaction, interaction with others of around their own age, plus minus a few years, but furthermore, interaction with much younger and with adults is only learned in the home, family environments, and interaction with friends, siblings, and their parents. There are also some subjects or activities that some schools promote, such as woodworking, metalwork, home economics, uh, covering basic cooking and baking or sewing, I think, 
um, music and the arts, IT, and of course, lastly, sport. Now, those activities are wonderful as they don't only teach a child something constructive that they can use in life, but helps to create self-confidence and creativity. Personally, I feel that the educational institutions are not doing enough with those subjects, nor is the adequate evaluation of a child's strengths and weaknesses. Classrooms are overcrowded, and time allocated per subject per day is way too short. The average time per subject per day is around the 40 minute mark. Okay, let's take the settling in time. Once the kids enter the classroom and the time the teacher and the students take to sort themselves out, settle down and, and get into the subject, at least 10 minutes has gone. And that is for the brain to at least adjust to the subject and where they're going with the lesson. Hence, we are now down to around 30 minutes to teach someone something and to get them to fully grasp and understand and learn something from the lesson. 30 minutes. Now bear in mind that the average child may not fully grasp what's going on, as often there's always a slightly slower child in the class. So basically, if your brain is not like a supercomputer, you will only gain or absorb around 10 to 20% of what has been taught. And that, of course, it is if you're lucky. The children never, ever have adequate time to ask questions as after that class is over, the bell rings, you need to pack your bags and go running off to your next class where you are confronted with a subject that's completely different to what you've just previously had. I then ask the question, would it not be more beneficial to only do two subjects per day. Hence, over an average week, you will still do around your usual 10 subjects. If so, the level of concentration and understanding would be tenfold. Think about it. Exams are all about stress. And my God, they know how to pile that on such as the crap of, now, don't turn your question paper over till I tell you. Then the clock has started and it becomes like a race against the clock. Oh my God, your stress level goes through the roof. Your brain literally shuts down. As you know, you have a limited time period to get good marks, as that is important, of course, and determines, determines whether you're stupid or not. In my honest opinion, exams should not be about grades. It should be done in a fun way and not against the clock to determine the child's strengths and weaknesses and if that child is best suited for the subject in question. If not, then remedial action needs to be taken by discussing it with the child as whether they wish to continue with that subject, either with or without extra lessons, or the child needs to stop doing it and then rather concentrate or specialize, so to speak, on subjects where his or her strengths best lies. Bear in mind, not everyone can be a doctor or a plumber. So why teach every child almost the same subjects for 12 bloody years? And saying that, let's take Albert Einstein as just one example. He wasn't the brightest boy in school and his teachers believed him to be retarded or mentally handicapped. The list goes on to many other brilliant people in history who gain little from school. So the moral of the story is what? We cannot change the system. And sadly, we have to go to school because the law says so. Yes, there are some that partially have removed themselves from the system by doing home study, whatever they call it which is also not the solution, as that is still controlled by the state. So, my advice is, work the system to your own benefit. Get from it what you need to gain and what to learn and what you need to learn from it and discard all the other crap. Be strong, stand fast 
and don't allow their brainwashing to influence you. Such as, if you don't get good grades, that'll have in affect your entire life. That's crap. And answer amongst hundreds of thousands of others prove that wrong. Remember, your basic education started at birth. Learning and discovering are natural instincts such as touch, sight, hearing, smell and taste. And then, then we moved on to our more survival instincts such as fear, anxiety, anger, frustration, depression, loneliness, boredom, um, and guilt. None of these are taught in schools. Yet some schools may detect and report if some of those symptoms are picked up as if it's a disease or a problem. They fail to see it as a natural human survival instinct, like an inbuilt light bulb that flashes to warn us about something. Now think about it. There's a reason why they call it survival instincts. Google it if you don't believe me. Yet society and the educational system don't address it, nor do they teach you how to use it to ensure your survival and life. And they are supposed to be the learned, educated people employed and paid, paid for by our tax dollars or euros. And even those learned educational teachers haven't even been taught that. Of course not. And why? Because they too went through the same bullshit system as we did. After all, they too are just sheep following the rules of their brainwashing masters. It is, it is only after our school years is when we really start to learn things that carry us forward and fine tune where we are going in life. And yes, you will sadly learn all of them by the mistakes that you're going to make. And why? Because you weren't taught any of them at school. Ask yourself the question, billions of people have made the same mistakes that have cost them dearly. Surely that would make a beautiful subject at school, including basic control, practical hands-on experiments to prove the theory of such failures. Would that not be a more beneficial subject than some of those other useless ones used to just fill up the school day and to justify their so-called bullshit educational system? So, in view of all of that said, don't allow panic, fear, exam stress, anxiety get to you. Just do what you can, and if you can get, and if you get a bad grade, grade so feckin' what? The only worst thing that can happen to you is that you won't qualify to get into college or university. Now, is that the end of the world? Bear with me on that one. There are other more enjoyable ways around it. Listen carefully to me. Remember what I said earlier, work the system and use it to your advantage and that your true learning will only start after your school years. So, be motivated. Get out there, get a job, work hard and save every penny you can. After a year or so at doing that, you will have learned, you will have, you will have learned a lot, such as experience in the real world and having to work for your money and your pleasures, which will teach you to appreciate it and not take anything for granted. You will learn how to work with money, and if in doubt, Google it, do some research, and learn online how to budget, and get into a habit of making sacrifices and to stash even a few pennies every week for that rainy day, which trust me, they will come, and many of them throughout your lifetime. Now, if you have a problem with budgeting or how to do it and cannot or don't know how to Google it, then you are very welcome to message me or get my email address off the channel page and I will happily guide you through it the basic way. Now, as stated earlier, 
I will be doing a YouTube series on working with money. After a few years of saving, then consider going on a travel working holiday for say six to 12 months or even longer. That way you will learn more about other countries, languages, races, cultures, etc, etc, in a fun way that you will enjoy. Plus, it will teach you the skills of working within a diverse society, plus so much more. Yes, it will be scary. But if you are afraid, then maybe talk to some of your close friends, your mates, into doing the same. That way, you will all have a safety net to help and support each other through the good and the tough periods. Hence another huge lesson learned in life. Now, once you come back home, get another job and work hard again, setting your sights on some goal that you have or will soon discover. You'll find by this stage that you would have developed a passion for something? Then research it. Self-learn as much as you can about it and then get possibly into a company or a job where this passion lasts. Thus, tremendous knowledge and experience will then be gained with that company. Furthermore, once you explain your motivation and passion for wanting to join that company, you will increase your chances tenfold of getting the job as the employer will see your passion and that you want to work, you're interested in work, you'll be diligent and you will be there for the long haul. Now, only once you're 100% committed and love what you're doing, then the next step is to register for an online correspondence course or a part-time course at college or university as by now you will be a mature student, so your grades from school will be irrelevant, even if you had failed. Also, discuss your future career and studies with your employer, as most larger companies do offer training courses, and some would even be willing to pay for your further education. Thus, you'll save thousands, if not tens of thousands. Yes, you may be locked into a long-term contract with that employer, but you know what? You then have a guaranteed job and an income for that period, plus job security and making it easier for you to budget and plan medium to long-term. Now, as the subject matter or passion of yours has been studied by you, you will find that you will then put 100% of everything you have into it. Thus, you will achieve great results and good grades because you're interested in it and you want to do it. Now, have I now given you some food for thought? I hope so. I hope I have. Now, getting back to my original topic, has society really changed? I get the feeling that you have, if you have been watching from the very start, namely part one and this part two, you will be getting the picture and some food for thought. Once again, this video seems to be going on, especially as a lot of ground has been covered. So I'm going to end off and continue it in part three, where I'll be talking about discrimination, racialism and LGP. LGP, LGBT, I'm sounding like Donald Trump now, acceptance, and they're coming out in society, which is still a major issue with our youth and society today. Thanks for watching. I do hope you've learned something new here today. And if so, please leave a comment below as your feedback is important in improving the overall quality of material being presented. If you know someone that could benefit from this video, then please share it with them as your help and support is really appreciated. Now please don't forget to click the thumbs up, like button below, subscribe, hit the bell if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you in part three shortly. Bye!